can you tell us something about your plans now that you're a free man? Uh, I had any experiences in prison you'd like to share with us. Are you going to write a book? Are the conditions in this prison as bad as we've been I'm led to believe? I'm not prepared to answer any questions well, at this like point in time. Late. I will say this. The technical violation of campaign law, which occurred several years ago, is in the past. I'm going to ask that you leave it there. Uh, how would no you rate your political future? No regrets? Oh. oh, I have regrets. My status under the law regarding politics and public service is permanently inoperative. However, my desire to serve the people of this state is unchanged. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Colbert just between us. My sources indicate that you have hopes of getting involved in prison reform. I don't know who you are, and I don't know how you came by that information. I'm Julie Masters. I'm with the Register. Off the record, the answer is yes. But um, prison reform is government connected. You just finished yes, explaining it. That... a special ruling by the Board of Corrections. Well, it's not an easy thing to come by. How do you plan to get it? Delicately. That's why I don't want any publicity, because it would damage my chances. And now you could damage my chances. But I trust that you won't, and that's all. Thanks. For he's an innocent fellow, for he's an innocent fellow, for he's an innocent fellow. That's finally, <laughs> finally free. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I'd do it, did you? No, I didn't. I sure am glad you did. Last time I heard you sing was in a campaign plane, grounded by snow in a little town of state. Fort Jervis. <laughs> I was doing advanced publicity for you. Uh, where to, folks? The Bugle Building, please. He said yes? He said he'll see you, reluctantly. I know, Mr. Jameson. It's going to take a lot of convincing to get him to your side. I wish I could do more, but... You've already done far more than I thought anyone would do, Rita. I've got to get him to listen to me. I don't have to listen to a convicted felon, Mr. Colbert. And I never did like your brand of politics, either. Your editorial page has made your position very clear over the years. Why did you agree to see me? To take personal pot shots at me? Because of that young lady out there. And incidentally, she has an ally in Mr. Parker here. I'm here because I need your help, Mr. Jameson. I need someone of high stature, of high standing in the community like yourself to intervene with the prison board on my behalf. Can you give me one good reason why I should go to bat for you? Hmm? Just give me one good reason. Time. And the thousands of discarded men who are running out of it and who are running out of patience as well. The conditions in that prison aren't fit for animals. I've seen zoos with bigger cages. Well, you know what it's like. I mean, prisons are supposed to offer some kind of rehabilitation. And in fact, they do for jungle survival. Certainly not for life in the community. So what makes you think that Colbert here can do a better job than the experts who've tried and failed? Because I've lived it. I know what the problems are. I know what causes them. And I want an opportunity to do something about it. I want to make a contribution. Call it retribution if it makes you feel any better. But I need your help. You know, we've got an opportunity here not only to help, but also to get a good story out of this. Well, I need some time to think it over. That's the best I can offer you right now. If I do agree, the bugle gets an exclusive, and Parker goes along to cover the story. Not so good, huh? Well, he didn't say no. But he didn't say yes, either. And I'll bet he didn't give you any indication of when he would say yes. Rita, Rita, would you buzz Jameson right away, please? There's been a riot at the state prison. The ringleaders are a couple of guys named Cates and McTeague. I knew it. I knew it was coming. Jim, do you think you could do anything about this? I know those men. 
But by the time Jameson gets finished thinking it over, it's going to be too late. Maybe not. Maybe not. Excuse me. Hey, wait just a minute, Rita. I'm not so sure this is a good idea. I think... What's going on up there? A prison riot. That's right, state prison. The inmates have taken hostages, they have control of the security office, and they won't negotiate with the superintendent. Well, it's got somebody on it. Parker's still out there, isn't he? So is James Colbert. He thinks he could turn the situation around. The Bugle is in a position to do more than just cover the story, Mr. Jameson. Why don't you give Colbert a chance? Help him to get inside that prison Rita, and... what kind of a hold does this convict have on you anyway? He may be a convict to you. But to me, he is a dignified human being that gave me a chance once at some self-respect when I really needed it. Mr. Jameson, he gave me my first job, one where I was trusted and given the responsibility I knew I could handle. You know, you get pretty down on yourself when you realize you are nothing more than the corporation's token black. Is that what you think you are here? I would not be here if I thought that. Good. Here's my agenda for the day. Get busy on it. After you foot through my call to the Board of Corrections. Set of wheels. Well, it's the guys from the newspaper. They're gonna put us in the headlines. That's our ticket out of here. What? I can hotwire that thing and nothing flat. Drive right out the gate. Yeah, and right into six months in a hole and a permanent reservation in this pig pen. Hey, do us all a favor, okay, big time? Forget it, huh? McTee's right. I've seen a lot of cons try and I've seen a lot of cons fail. So back off. Back off of me, big man. Maybe you want to go out of here in a rubber sack. But well, not this kind. You. You on the end. Yeah. You have. Come on, stand up. What the biggest shield I could find. Come on. Come on. Up against the wall. Hands high. Up. Come on now. Let's move. No, let me. Yeah. Hey, I said I'd contact you if and when I had anything to say, huh? Hopeless. I told you you were wasting your time, Colbert. Warden, may I talk to him? At least let me try. Take it on the extension. McTeague, this is James Colbert. Hey, Colbert. Gets in your blood, huh? What's the matter? Can't stay away? What do you want? Just hear me out. That's all I ask. What for? Why you? Well, you're going to have to talk to somebody eventually, McTeague. I've faced your problems, and I understand them. And you know that I do. But they're not your problems anymore, so what can you do about them? Well, with your cooperation, I can help you get what you want out of this. Now, what do you say that we get together and talk? We are talking about it. Be easy over a cup of coffee. Hey, just slow down a minute there, Slick. First of all, I have a list of conditions. We're gonna go. We're gonna get out of this tub. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. I'm not through. I said no gods, no guns, and no warden. I'll agree to that. McTeague, what do you say to a reporter? I say lousy. A reporter? He doesn't want you involved. Now look, I mean, you made a deal and he's making a mistake. More than that, I... <laughs> Yes. Yes, I'm fine. I, uh, I was just thinking, um, maybe you shouldn't pressure him right now. Maybe you should start negotiating and bring me in later. I'll, I'll just back out of here for now. 
Well, it's your point, McTeague. I'm going to see you alone. I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Open it up! Drop the gun! Drop it! Don't make a widow out of his wife. Open it up! Put down your gun! Put it down! Okay, Clover, like a statue. He's clean. Salad, yeah. Well, you pulled it off so far, but we got a long way to go to make this caper work. Don't worry. You guys just stop the riot and make me look like a hero. It's in the works. Hey, that reporter, is he gonna blow it for us or what? He'll be trouble. Well, what can't you get rid of him? For now, I have gotten rid of him. But Kate's is right, we have a long way to go. I had to agree that he could cover me. He'll be back. Then he could still blow this whole caper. I'm going to see that he can't. Next time his name appears in a news flash, it will be in an obit column. There's a whole long list of grievances still to be thrashed out, but I've got to tell you, Jim Colbert really handled those inmates during the riot. But after three days of negotiation, all you've accomplished is the concert at the prison. Well, the negotiations on the other things are still underway. Why? Command performance by my administrative assistant. Well, Jim thought that some live entertainment might help to settle things down. So, uh, he asked me to sing. All right. And my deal with Colbert still stands. I want you there, Parker. You... Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Jameson. Now, Mr. Colbert is going to meet me at my apartment, and we're going to arrange all the coverage. It's Jim Colbert. Oh, hi, Jim. I thought you'd be here by now. Yes, I thought so, too, but I'm running behind schedule here at the prison. Uh, I think that you're going to have to meet me here. Can you leave now? Yeah, sure. Just leave my pass at the gate. It's already done, Pete. Oh, wait a minute. What about Rita? We were supposed to pick her up. That's right. Um, stop there first. Bet.
Hey, better shake it. We've got customers out there. Little okay, case so of the jitters? The giant economy size. <laughs> we have just a few loudspeakers left to position, then uh, we should be ready to go soon. Okay. I told you, I'm a reporter, and I've got to get into that concert. Fella, there's no pass here for anybody by the name of Parker. Sorry, but no pass, no play. Look, uh, Mr. Colbert, James Colbert, now, he was supposed to leave it for me, and I was supposed to pick it up. Yeah, I know, Mr. Colbert. He arranged for two passes, his and the gal that was with him. I let him in before. Was that a young black woman with short hair, kind of attractive? Yeah. I figured she was with the show. I checked out her guitar. Hey, listen, uh, do you want me to try and contact Superintendent Bishop? Are you okay? Yeah, sure. What about my calling the superintendent? No, thanks. It's all right. For your intro. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now the reason you're here, a talented, beautiful performer. I cannot see what kind of person is inside of me. I'm basically honest and easy to know. But who You know, we better move it, Katesy, because the next loud sound we hear ain't going to be the sound of applause. Who am I? I want to understand who I am. So Just like the ocean can never be the sea and the flower Rita, Rita, it's Jim. Talk to me. Are you all right? Oh, wow.
Rita, I want to talk to you about Colbert. Did he take you to the prison before the concert? Yeah, he picked me up at my place. I was supposed to take you there, remember? He called me at my apartment at the last minute and canceled our meeting. Said he was running way behind schedule or something. I don't know. Anyway, I was supposed to pick you up, and we were both supposed to meet him at the prison. So I opened the door to my apartment to leave, and kaboom. He lied to me, Rita, and he lied to you, too. But why? That's what I'd like to ask Mr. Colbert. Now, do you know where I can get in touch with him, where he is, ah, his address? Ah, you're back. Good. You were with Colbert now. Where are the riot pictures? Oh, I didn't get it. Spider-Man saved a man's life, two convicts escaped, and you didn't get any pictures? Escaped? Who escaped? Okay, so McTeague. I went over the back wall during the commotion. They're the ones that Jim negotiated with after the riot, aren't they? Yes, they are, and I have a feeling they got to talking about something other than a new work furlough program. What are you hinting at? I'm not hinting at anything, sir. I am saying that Colbert set this whole thing up so he could bust those two out. He's been... I'm sorry, Rita, but that's the way it is. Excuse me. Ah, she'll get over it. Go to my office. I'd like to find out why you blew that assignment. What's Colbert doing with a couple of long-termers like those cons? Maybe we should run it through the riddle box. What do you get when you cross a disgraced Politico with an ex-biker, ex-boxer, and an over-the-hill aerospace technician who got caught taking home a few circuit boards in his lunchbox? Beats me. I haven't the foggiest. Well, maybe we should ask Rita. She's been working this riddle longer than any of us. Uh, Parker, wait a minute. Parker! How'd I do? Well, it was better than the last time. Look, but... did I make it or didn't I? Oh, sure, you made it by a mile. Hey, Peter, wait! Oh, not now, I'm sorry. I can't oh, wait. Great. Listen, we did have a date. I was supposed to meet you here. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I apologize. Something big has just come up. I'll have to make it up to you later. Oh, yeah? Well, not good enough, friend. You're on some kind of a hot lead, right? Back off, would you, Julie? I'm really, really in a hurry. Look, you beat me six ways from Sunday on the Colbert story. Is this connected? I'm not kidding. I'm leaving. <laughs> Try something else. Just like that, we threw out a whole year's planning? Why? Because the cycle won't make the leap. Here, let me tell you something, Slick. We must have done about a million jumps this morning, right? Am I right? And I only made it once. By this much. So what's wrong with using a chopper, huh? We just can't fly a chopper over the city. They'd spot us on radar like that. Forget it. There's no other way. I know it's risky. We just have to take our chances. Hey, I'm the one that's putting it on the line. It's my ticket that gets canceled. Now, listen. There's 
50, maybe 100 million bucks in that vault on a top floor. The only other way is the elevator. It needs the manager's palm print to program the elevator to stop at the vault level. If I could get him to do it, I wouldn't need you. You'd still be under the rehabilitative care of the good people of this state. You're going to make that leap. And we're going to do it today. Somebody there. Rita! Hello, Jim. Be all right if I came in? I was just getting some papers together. It's just about to leave. I, it'll just be for a minute. I have to talk to you. Come in. Wrote a lot of campaign speeches here, Rita. Wish that's what I was doing now, believe me. What are you doing, Jim? A lot of people are saying things about you. Terrible things. I'm not surprised. That's just one of many attitudes that's going to have to be dealt with and changed. Once a con, always a con. You've heard that before. And I don't want to believe it, Jim, but... <sighs> I found this in my guitar keys. And I know you lied to Peter about picking me up. Yeah, that's right, I did. What? Everything people are telling you is probably true, Rita. So you'd better believe it. But why? What for? Because I'm going to get something out of this for myself. That's what for. I put every cent that I ever earned and all my energy into a political career. It took years of planning and work. Constant travel, a couple of hours sleep in airport lounges, night after night, one speech after another, one speech after another, till my throat was raw. And for what? I'm convicted for accepting one campaign contribution I don't even need. I make a minor misstep, and my whole life is blown out of the water. Is that fair? Is it? 14 months in jail? In that god-awful rotten hole? I didn't lie about that. If you're not an animal when you go in there, you're an animal when you come out. Jim, I, I gotta go. Now, Rita, I'm afraid that I can't allow you to do that. I have a gun in the drawer, Rita. I would rather not take it out. Now, cooperate, please. Cooperate. Case? McKee? Tie her up in the garage. I'll handle it. Something I've got to finish out there before we go. You better move her car around back so nobody will spot it. Yeah. That's uh, not too tight, is it? There are far worse kinds of pains, Mr. Believe me. It's gonna make a lot of noise. Don't let it frighten you.
going. You're not going to get rid of me, so why don't you just level? What's here? Don't go away, go all right? Go ahead, go ahead. It's OK. Come on. I don't know what's here. Let's just say I'm playing a hunch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's just say we're both playing your hunch. Julie, why don't you do us all a big favor and go away? Any day now. Peter, I'm sticking with you for this story, whatever it is. Now, you can't change it, so why don't you just cool down and be nice? them up to. They can finger us, you know. Yeah. By the time they get a chance to, we'll be sitting pretty with a hundred million dollars where nobody can find us. Oh, anymore. yeah, that, that's just great. They'll go off and join some school for the deaf and dumb, right? Huh? Sit down. That's what I told myself just before I was busted the last time. But listen to me. This is not the way to go. There's not going to be any killings. Now get that through your head. Now get moving. You too, Kate. Let's go. Let's get moving. I'm sorry, Rita. But don't worry, you won't be hurt. That man's crazy. I don't know about you, Casey, but if we pull this job off, I'm going to pay a visit to that garage on the way back. I ain't gonna let anybody walk around that can put me back in the pig pen. Those three, they gotta be iced. to the roof, Mac. My name is Carlos. Carlos. Okay. How could Colbert get his hands on a hundred million dollars? Did you hear them say anything? No, only what you did. When they were in here. Uh. Wait a minute. Colbert was on the banking committee. Now, they paid him off and fingered him to save their own skins. It was all part of some kind of international foreign exchange currency commission or something like that. They claimed that he forced them to make campaign donations. Yeah, that's what they said, that he offered them his vote on international monetary issues if they... Yeah, well, what was the name of the company or the bank? Or what was it, Rita? IFMM, International Financial Monetary Merchants. Yeah. They're in that big security building downtown. Colbert must have figured out some kind of a way to crack their vault. Go ahead, Peter. I'll go with Rita. Yeah, go, Peter. That doesn't look too
too far. That's 18 feet, exactly. Yeah, and you'll try an 18-foot jump with a 30-foot run. Parker, I'm with the Bugle. Who's your I'm... appointment with? Uh, I don't actually have an appointment, but I have reason to believe that someone is making an attempt on your vault. <laughs> yeah, me too. There are over a hundred million reasons right up there in the vault. But let me tell you something. There ain't nobody gonna crack this, baby. There's no way to get to it. And even if you could, it's pick-proof, bomb-proof. I mean, you even touch the surface of that door with a match, a torch, an explosive device, bingo. All the bells start ringing. Alarm system seat sensitive. Yes, I'm aware of that. What I'm saying is I think someone might have figured out a way around all of those things. Uh-huh. Well, maybe they have, but they ain't here yet. I'll call you when they show. It'd be smarter if you called the police. We do our own policing around here. Thanks.
yellow box? That is a computerized ultrasonic sensor. Oh, yeah? Well, what's this supposed to do? That is going to open the safe for us. And it's going to do it without setting off any of the alarms that are sensitive to vibrations or to heat. Smart, huh? Yeah. Not bad for an old con. We can look at it later. Let's do it. All right. That's it. Let's go. I think the door is really shut on these guys this time. You a witness, sir? I'm sorry, Rita. I know this was a pretty bitter pill for you. Well, sometimes the medicine does leave a bad taste, but it does the job. I'm okay. <laughs> 